Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Christian Calderon. I'm the CEO of Game Jam. Uh, just a little bit about me. Uh, I was exe held executive roles at KetchUp, which was acquired by Ubisoft, uh, KixI, and also Docs, the makers of uh, Two Docs. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about growth and monetization and hyper casual. Um, and I'm going to have a lot of slides, so I'll talk fast and go through them quickly. If you have any questions, just let me know at the end. Uh, so I've worked on a lot of games. Um, I think at, at KetchUp, we published while I was there at least 100 games. Uh, and we looked at thousands of games. Um, we were only three people, so uh, uh, it, it's a lot of games to look at. Um, uh, so uh, I guess to talk about hypercasual, like how it kind of came about, it, Hypercasual games have been around for a long time. We just didn't call them hypercasual games before. Um, in the, when the, uh, from 2007 to 2010, the main pricing model in apps was a premium pricing model, so you would pay money to download an app. But the problem with this uh, business model um, was that it was hard to scale because uh, players would, you would lose out on players that would want to spend more money. Um, and then also, you would lose on players that didn't want to spend money. That could also contribute to your game in some way. Um, and so in 2000, from 2012 to 2017, uh, the free, freemium model really started to uh, take off. Um, and this was uh, developers really exercising their ability to allow players to spend more money in a game and increase their uh, LTV per user um, through in-app purchases. Uh, but then around uh, 2017, another big shift happened, uh, 2018, another huge shift happened, and this is uh, like hyper casual or ads driven primarily by ads monetization. And this is where um, developers can really exercise the bottom of this curve and uh, monetize players who just want to play the game but don't want to spend money on in-app purchases. And um, you can see in... Uh, from 2014 to 2017, uh, KetchUp was a top 10 uh, publisher worldwide, um, up there with like Facebook, Apple, Google. Um, and in 2017, both KetchUp and Voodoo held the fourth, uh, the fifth and sixth um, uh, positions worldwide uh, in, the, in the App Store, making up, I think, ha almost half of uh, downloads in, in, in casual, which was uh, for that year, two developers, uh, publishers alone, which was pretty exciting, uh, especially because KetchUp was a very small team um, and Voodoo was growing and, and uh, up and coming. Uh, so uh, to talk about, I'll talk about like um, ways to uh, increase uh, monetization and also just basics of how to scale with user acquisition, lowering CPIs. Um, and, but to do this, it's important to note that you need some kind of process. Uh, most developers, I talk to a lot of developers all over the world, and they're always missing this key component where um, they're iterating or building a game, but they don't allow for some kind of feedback loop. Sometimes developers will work on games for a year and not even test it and find out when they launch that game a year later that you know, the CPI is way too high and uh, they have to redo all the art assets then the artist quits because you know he does. He spent a year working on this game. <laughs> uh, anyway, so having this kind of feedback loop is very, very helpful in your sprint process. Um, so for us, what we do is we develop a game or a prototype in a week, and then we uh, test it in, in uh, a market, like mostly like in the United States on iOS, uh, and then we allow for feedback, uh, and then we'll make iterations on that game. Sometimes the, when we're launching games, we'll, uh, uh, when we're testing games, um, this feedback might not include development uh, the second or third time around. It might just be changes to marketing. So maybe we'll make a game for a week, but we're trying to market it, and then we're trying to market it in different ways to see if we can reduce the acquisition cost. But anyways, having this process is really, really important if you want to um, uh, and, uh, learn from your, your development and improve your LTV or lower your cost per install. Uh, so cost per install, um, pretty basic KPI. Like it's, you look at your cost divided by the amount of installs you have. 
Um, as you increase the amount of installs you have um, uh, for the same amount of cost, obviously your CPI goes down, right? Easy concept to understand. Um, the formula for looking at installs is essentially looking at the amount of impressions you have multiplied by the click-through rate, and then again multiplied by the conversion rate. So let's say you have a, a you see an impression on your phone, you click that. That's a click. That's a click-through rate. And then you you go to the app store, you you download the game, and then you open it. That's considered a conversion. So I usually split these two metrics apart um, because improving them you're doing different things. And I'll give you some examples right now. So click-through rate, um, conversion rate. So just to talk about how how we improve or test the click-through rate. Um, I'm seeing this a lot in the stores right now. So I don't know if anyone's seen these ads where like you see something like sawing a phone or some guy's about to hit someone and then all of a sudden it just changes to the gameplay. These are gimmicks to improve click-through rate. Um, when we're testing games, actually we'll test even characters to see which one has a higher click-through rate. So in, in these ads, uh, we have one character uh, two characters, everything else is exactly the same. The copy, the background colors, everything is exactly the same. We just change the character and then we test it to see which one has a higher click through rate. Um, and this can really help also determine in our game development process which, what the main character should be uh, and helps us, um, um, yeah, just improve our acquisition costs. This is a, uh, so quick question. Anyone know which, which one, based on these metrics, the CTR and CVR. Uh, so this ad has 1% CTR, 50% CVR. This has, ad has 50% CTR and 1% CVR. Do you guys, which one will have more installs, do you think? The first one or the second one? The first The second. Okay, so this is a trick question. So they both have the same amount of installs. This, uh, this, so this, uh, this is actually uh, something, uh, a test that I give like uh, of my uh, mar marketers when I'm interviewing. Um, uh, to, to, and it's important to understand the differences because based on the ad format, you're looking at totally different numbers. So for example, like if you have a playable ad, you'll see much higher click-through rate, but maybe lower conversion or a rewarded video. You can't compare that to an interstitial. So understanding these metrics by ad format are pretty important. Um, so, for example, if, uh, and then understanding how they change the, your, your CPI and your, your download rate is important too. So, if, for example, I increase my click through rate in this, uh, in, in this ad format by, uh, uh, you know, 0.2% or 20%, I'm going to get uh, an, an extra install which lowers my CPI from $4 to $3.33. And this is just an example of how we, uh, are trying to improve our, our CPI over time uh, and hit the target that we want to hit. So conversion rate. Um, so after you click the, after you click this button, you're sent to the app store, right? And so how do you improve? So it, improving click through rate is one thing, but improving, improving the conversion rate is usually a different, could be a different process. You can improve it here. Like for example, let's say you have like a, an ad and you're demonstrating the, the gameplay and you go to the app store and it's the same gameplay. The, the ads like that usually have pretty good conversion. Um, ads that have ad conversion is for example, like maybe in the ad you see a, um, uh, I don't know, something like a totally different game and then you go to the app store, you know, s some, some games will advertise something that looks totally different and then you go in the app store and it looks like a totally different game. Games like that usually have slightly less conversion, but high click-through rate because they're trying to optimize for that. So optimizing for conversion rate. So um, one, we use this as free. So the, in Google Play, you can do A-B tests for free in the storefront listing. Um, I highly recommend if, you, if you're not using this to use it because it's totally free. Um, and it's, it's extremely helpful. Uh, so I'll just go through some examples. Um, I launched this product at Google I.O. in 2016, and so this is, these are slides from Google I.O. Um, from, from that uh, presentation, but it gives you kind of an example of how we improve the click-through rate and then the amount of uh, conversion increases that you could have. So here are two different uh, tests. So in this test, we have a control on the left-hand side and a variant on the right-hand side. Basically, in these tests, uh, so what ha what's happening is you're sending your, the, in the test, you're splitting your impressions. So 
half of the people, for example, if you have one control and one variant and you're splitting it 50-50, half of the people are seeing one icon and the other half of the people are seeing the other icon and you're looking at the difference of, of conversion, so who installs more versus one or the other. Um, so for example, in this case, the control did better by 7% and 4%. Um, uh, so it, in, in this situation, if, at Dots, we, we didn't use a branded icon and we kept the, the, this is still the same icon today for the original Dots Classic. Um, this is a game called Two Dots uh, that I launched and um, I'm testing here the short description. Uh, short description is interesting because it also contains keywords. So not only are you testing the short description, but you're also putting keywords into the short description. Um, what I noticed in the short description was that actually putting description is not good. You want to put a call to action in the sh short description. So telling people to just download the game usually is uh, more effective. So in this case, um, play the best uh, social puzzle game on Android. It's easy, fun, free to install. Kind of long, has keywords, but it's, it's uh, a call to action telling the user to play the game, as opposed to this one is Two Dots is a new, fun, and free social puzzle game. So it's like more like a description. Um, the call to action performed better. Uh, so this one's fun. So th these are screenshots from Dots Classic. And um, in uh, this set of screenshots, I have just the game board. And this set of screenshots I had uh, illustrating gameplay. Uh, which one do you guys think performs better? This one or this one? This one? Absolutely. So 6% increase. And it's just like a small change, right? Like all I'm doing is like showing, illustrating the gameplay. But it, this concept you can apply to all your games. Illustrating gameplay, what's happening in the game, uh, is really, really important, especially for conversion. Um, so. I've done a bunch of tests uh, in, at, uh, at, at DOTS. The, this was kind of like um, the variance I would see in conversion. Uh, today I've done tests, I've seen like huge increases, even bigger on icons. But this kind of gives you a proxy for like what you should work on first. So if you're, if you're doing A-B tests in your storefront, I would definitely start with the icon and then move on to screenshots, uh, short description and feature graphic. Um, I think the video is more important on iOS. Um, but uh, in uh, Google Play, this was the data that I received. Uh, but definitely, I th Icon is something you should start on first for increasing your conversion. Um, okay, so that's cost. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about lifetime value and how we improve uh, lifetime uh, value. So this is the equation for one of the equations for how I look at lifetime value. And the reason why I break it up into um, retention and ARPDAO is because from a product perspective, I'm approaching these things very differently. So if I want to increase ARPDAO, it's very different for, for my approach to how I increase retention. Um, and all this formula is saying is LTV for this n number of days is the summation of revenue for some period, defined period of time multiplied by your ARPDAO. So for example, um, when I'm forecasting retention, we use a very simple decay curve. We're plotting out points, and then we're using nonlinear regression or a simple decay curve to predict the future value of, of, the, of the retention. And then taking the summation under the curve gives us the, the lifetime. Uh, so for example, this lifetime is 25.5 days. Then you multiply it by your ARPDAO. Let's say it's 10 cents, and then you get an LTV for that period of time. So we're defining it over a certain amount of days. Um, so I, yeah, so I'm going to focus mainly on ads, because we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to focus mainly on ads arc DAO, um, and talk about how you can increase your ads arc DAO, uh, from a technical perspective. Um, I won't talk too much from a product perspective. So uh, how many people have ads in their games? Everyone? Oh, that's awesome. OK, so I hope you guys like this. Um, so imagine like uh, the way I illustrate, uh, the best way I think to improve um, ads monetization is just by increasing the amount of competition that's happening in your application. So we have lots of advertisers advertising in your game and uh, to increase the price essentially, imagine like this green supply line is your app at a certain period of time, like a defined amount of impressions and this, uh, demand curve is, let's just say, the 
demand for serving ads um, for, uh, with those, uh, for those set amount of impressions that you have. Um, if you were somehow to shift this, this curve up, uh, increasing the, shifting out the demand curve, you, in theory, would increase the price. So imagine like this P line is your CPM. Um, the green line is your, the, impression, the, the amount of people that you have, the impressions that you can serve, and the demand for those uh, impressions. Um, so this basic supply and demand concept works for increasing CPM in, uh, in, in the games. Um, this is an important curve to look at. So while I was at KetchUp, I looked at a lot of, uh, worked with a lot of ad networks and uh, um, at the network level to understand uh, how CPM decay looked like. And this is, I found this to be true for almost all networks where, um, and uh, you, you, the first, this uh, is a frequency. So for example, how many ads you serve in a, in a given session, and this is the CPM. So for example, your first impression that you serve usually has a higher CPM, and let's say that same user keeps watching ads, the CPM starts to decay. Um, and this is a, something that happens in, uh, a phenomenon that happens at the network level for, for all games. Uh, it's important to understand this because um, a lot of ad networks will say, hey, give me the first impression, right? They, wanna, they want it because it's the most valuable. So it's under, important to understand this, this, uh, how, how this works. Also from a product perspective, maybe you don't want to serve that many ads. Um, so for example, at Dots, we wanted to show just one ad, one rewarded video ad, um, and because it had the highest CPM, and then we wouldn't let the user see another ad again uh, for that day. Um, so understanding this is kind of important. Um, uh, the adoption rate uh, is also very important, and we'll kind of go over that in a second. But like people engaging with your ads, the percentage of people engaging with your ads, um, has a big effect on your ads arc out. Uh, and in this illustration, we show as your CPM increases and the adoption rate increases, the, the revenue that you get from that first imp impression will go up proportionally. Um, so I've used a lot of me mediation providers. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not going to plug any particular one. Uh, a lot of people ask me, like, oh, hey, which mediation provider is the best? It's not so much who the mediation provider is. It's just kind of how you use it, really. So for the same mediation provider, you can get very low ads arc out, uh, and then very, very high ads arc out if you just change how you set it up technically. And we'll go over examples here. Um, so this is a game that was a top 10 puzzle game uh, in 113 countries. I think it had a million installs in the US, um, and it was doing about 2.5 million impressions for this data set. Uh, and it has a 96% fill rate. Uh, 4.6 uh, star rating in the App Store. Um, and here's some data behind the, the, the game. So it has an average CPM of about $8, engagement rate of 46%, impressions per DAO, so how many impressions I'm seeing uh, per daily active user was 2.1, and the ARC DAO is 1.7 cents. And this is just for one ad format. So this is an interstitial ad. I'm not looking at ARC DAO for all the ads, including, yeah. This is iOS, US iOS US. So only iOS US and only the interstitial ad. Um, and this is my, uh, this is the ARC DAO. This is a very bad ARC DAO for, for an interstitial format in the iOS US. This is also a very bad CPM. And I'm going to explain why this is really bad. Um, and the engagement rate is also not too good. And this, all, all the metrics are not, not that good. Um, one of the biggest issues with this, with how this particular uh, um, developer set this up was he has only three networks, and, uh, and so not, not a lot of demand, right? Not a lot of competition, and he has it set to auto-optimize. Um, so based on whatever mediation you're using, they have some, uh, um, Algorithm or some way of optimizing your optimizing your CPMs, and you don't really have a window how they an idea of how they do that. Each of the methodologies are very different, um, and usually what ends up happening is you get a low CPM like this, which results in a low ads arc out. Um, he had some other issues where uh, this developer was serving a 
the first time you would see an ad was in two minutes. Um, and the logic to see the ad was kind of strange. So like every other level, you had a 50% chance to see an ad. So that's partly why this impressions per DAO is so low. Um, and the mediation just like totally needs an overhaul. And I'll, I'll show you how to fix this in a second. Uh, but this is a uh, don't, the, the lesson learned from this is don't set up your mediation like this. Like three networks auto optimize is not good. Um, here's another game. So this was a top one puzzle game in 60 countries. Um, top 10, so it's, sorry, top one game in 60 countries. Top 10 puzzle game in 140 countries and 4 million installs in the US. One point, uh, Eight, I think this should be um, should this number is wrong. Sorry, and 90, 91 percent fill rate. Um, so I'll just kind of go over the data here. So this uh, was the CPM, 12.7, so a little bit higher. Engagement rate a lot lower, 23 percent, and uh, impressions per DAO very low, 0.4x, and the ads arp DAO is just miserable. I mean, point. Five cents uh, is just really, really bad, uh, and I'll. And this is mainly the reason. Uh, the ma mainly the reason is because this impressions per DAO is very low, and the engagement rate is really, very really low. That's really bringing down the ads arc DAO a lot. CPM is a little bit better, um, but from a product perspective, the, uh, uh, this isn't performing that well. Um, this also isn't the best setup. So this he has a. Uh, Three, uh, two networks uh, in manual, and then he has uh, four networks uh, auto optimized. Um, the problem with this is when you set up a, a network in a manual position with no defined price and no defined cap, the network can serve that impression at any price. So, he, the, you know, I'm not saying that Iron Source is doing this, but technically they could serve this impression for a penny, uh, which could be bad. Um, so you, if you're doing a, a manual setup like this, you always want to define the price at which you serve the ad. Um, and then obviously we talked about auto-optimized and why that's not, uh, I, I think, not the best setup. Um, from a product perspective, he's serving the, uh, uh, the first ad after level five, which takes three minutes. All right. uh, ads logic uh, is 33% uh, to chance uh, to see the ad after every other level. And then the mediation, as I said before, just needs a change. Uh, obviously, when you're affecting, when you're changing the ads logic, you have to understand how it affects the retention. If you serve an ad every like 10 seconds, uh, it, it, it's going to have an impact on your retention, right? So you have to understand that that trade-off. Um, this was a top one puzzle game in 60 countries, uh, 3.7 million installs in the U.S. and 11.3 million impressions in the U.S. with a 48% fill rate, uh, lower star rating. Um, this fill rate is a, a lower fill rate, which uh, I think is pretty good. I, I don't like to have high fill rates in, in, in the game. Um, and this game has much, like, just way better metrics. So uh, 28.77 uh, cent CPM. 8.4 cents arped out, and this is just on the interstitial unit. Uh, so, if, like the game has probably the ads arped out is more than double for all the ad formats. Uh, 2.9 uh, impressions per DAO, and the engagement rate is about 61 percent. The reason why this CPM is so strong is because I've set up a uh, fully manual uh, waterfall. So, I'm using seven networks, 40 instances, and in the price range from $50 to $6. So for example, uh, Iron Source here is, um, uh, this impression is uh, at $50. And then AppLovin, I think, is maybe like, I don't know, $49. And then Unity is at $40. So I only serve the impression if they hit that price. Um, and this allows me to control the, uh, the, the value I get from uh, each impression. This can actually be even further optimized. Uh, in other games, I've set the price range from $95 to like $4, and I've seen a, 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 a bigger impact to CPM. Um, 
uh, depending on the network. Like for example, Facebook, you can have a pretty high uh, CPM on your first call. Um, so I, this ways to optimize it is you can maybe add more networks, um, expand the price range, and obviously uh, you need to test the effect on retention if you change the ads logic. Uh, so we kind of talked about three different or two different setups. The one we didn't mention was header bidding. Um, so automatic, you can set, your, set up your waterfall automatically. You can use like a fully manual setup, which I think is the best. And then you can do header bidding, uh, which is kind of a new, uh, uh, it, it, people have been talking about it for a long time. The, the methodology, the idea behind header bidding is really, really good. So the, the idea is that these networks that are bidding can bid in milliseconds. So ideally, they can bid all along <laughs> in between all of these instances. Uh, in theory, it should increase the competition because your, uh, the ad network is sending, um, uh, responding to more requests to serve an ad. So in theory, it should increase your CPMs. But what I've found is actually, uh, and I've talked to other developers and they've experienced the same issue. With header bidding, the bidders were really, really good at buying very low CPMs, which isn't uh, at a high fill rate which is not something I'm a huge fan of. Um, and this results in a lower CPM and it also results in a lower ads arc depth. So if you do use header bidding, my recommendation is to always set a price floor on the CPM. So don't let the bidders uh, acquire, uh, serve ads uh, for, for low CPM because it's gonna result in a low ads arc depth. Um, and kind of like the price ranges that I've seen in the tests that I've done um, was, uh, from an automatic setup, uh, I've, I've seen usually like one to eight cents um, uh, ads arc DAO. In a manual setup, between like 18 to 19 cents. I've just seen some games that have like 25 cent ads arc DAO. Uh, and then header bidding, um, it can, it's uh, slightly lower, mainly because of this issue here with the, uh, the bidders filling at low CPMs. Um, <laughs> So just the takeaway on, on the header bidding is it could work well, but uh, I think it just the technology just needs more time because it's pretty it's pretty new. So if you do use header bidding, I would just be aware of that that issue. Um, so we talked really fast, and I'm basically out of time. Uh, but uh, a lot of the concepts, if they're unfamiliar to you, I highly recommend to read this book. It's called Freemium Economics by Eric Supert, and uh, this book kind of talks about the basics of user acquisition. Uh, modeling and kind of like the supply and demand of uh, rules of supply and demand that uh, can apply to your, your games. Um, yeah, and that's all. Thanks. Do we have time for questions? Anyone have a question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can, I can give you access to the slides. Just send me an email and I'll... I'll Yep. The the ECPM or like CPM sometimes drops like randomly. Yep. So is it something that we are doing at the uh, you can say the website? Uh, your CPM. Or is it something from the, from the ad network itself? No, you have control of that. So if your CPM is dropping um, and uh, and. It could be for a few different reasons, but the, the most common situation is you have an automatic setup. So you're not controlling the price points at which you ser you're serving impressions in your, in your game. And because of that, you could have very f big fluctuations in CPM. Uh, also with the bidders, if you're not setting floors, you could see big fluctuations in, in CPM. Okay. But if you have a fully manual setup and you're controlling the price points, uh, you basically don't, uh, you can have a more control over your CPM, I think. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah.